Hello, here we are with a review of the LG G2. So we unboxed this a few weeks ago on our YouTube channel, and I've been using this as my personal device for the last couple of weeks now. Now to give you a little bit of uh, an idea of the background of this, I personally use the Samsung Galaxy S4 as my main device, and now I've been using the G2, and the transition has been fairly seamless. And to be quite honest, um, Going back to my S4 might be quite tough. I really like the G2. There's a lot going for it. There are some failings, um, but it's very, very good. And Samsung are gonna have to watch LG in terms of what they're doing. So I'm not gonna dwell on all of the, the features and the specs in this device, but just generally give you a good uh, overview of my thoughts and opinion. So in the hand, actually compared to the Galaxy S4, it doesn't feel much bigger, even though it's got a slightly bigger display. The bezel on here is so thin that you hardly notice the difference. So I haven't really felt that to be an awkward transition. The uh, contours on the back of the device and the corners make it feel quite comfortable. I actually personally quite like the plastic finish. Um, admittedly, it's not as strong as the aluminium of the HTC One, but I actually like the fact that uh, plastic doesn't scratch in quite the same way. It's cheaper to repair if necessary, um, and it's a little bit more robust in, in terms of its longevity. You know, with aluminium, um, it can scratch and looks nasty if it does get scratched. Um, and it can actually also feel quite cold to the touch where plastic is obviously uh, quite warm to the touch. So as you can see, actually, as I'm uh, turning the device here, one of the nice features that LG have put in here is the ability to actually orientate the, lands the home screen in landscape mode. Now, this can be done on all Android devices with the help of additional applications or launchers, but LG have done this out of the box, and I think that's a, a massive plus because I don't know about you, I could be writing a text message or email and using it in landscape mode, then I go back to the home screen, uh, and it's then in portrait mode, and I'm trying to navigate to apps or I'm in my app drawer, and it's all in the other way around. I have to turn the device, and it gets a bit frustrating. But I really like um, the fact that you can orientate it in landscape straight out of the box. That's a massive bonus. Of course, you can have it in portrait mode as well. So, as we've probably seen from the other reviews and everything. We've got the main focus on here is the rear mounted uh, back buttons. It has taken a little bit of getting used to, but what it does mean is there's a real flush look to the edge of the device. Um, it looks really clean, and even the micro uh, SIM card slot here is, is sort of fades into the device. You'd hardly notice it was there. It's the bottom of the device that actually has the main uh, obstructions, if you like, or those things that affect the design. We've got the micro USB port here that actually uh, has USB hosting and video out with a slim port connector, not the usual uh, MHL cable. We've got two speakers here, which are very good indeed. And we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I like the positioning of the jacks on this device for two reasons. This is good for for uh, docks with the micro USB. I've actually had this working with Samsung docks and other universal docks that I've got. It sits in quite nicely. I like the fact that the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is down here because I personally feel that if you've got a set of headphones in, it's more natural to put the device sort of top down into your pocket than it is bottom down for those devices that have the headphone jacks on the top. That's my personal opinion. The other nice thing about the micro USB port being down here is the fact that it works better in car kits and things like that when it's in portrait or landscape mode. Some devices uh, have them on the side, which I find can be a bit of a pain because if the cable's here and it's quite tight, it can often pull the, the device to sort of twist in, in the car kit, depending on your individual setup. So there's a 3000 milliamp hour battery um, under the back cover. It's a sealed back cover. You can't remove the uh, battery. And I have had about two days use out of the battery. Now I would say I was a, a medium uh, user of the device. I'm not the lightest user, but I'm not the heaviest. Um, on some of the heavier days, I did find I needed to charge it at the end of the day. And I think most people get into that cycle anyhow. But uh, on one occasion, I was going to bed and I'd usually charge my phone up and it was about 60%. I thought, well, I don't need to charge it and I'll see how long it lasted. And it lasted uh, from 7 a.m. one day to about 7.30 p.m. the following day, which is very good. So the buttons on the back are quite unique and it's taken a little bit of getting used to, uh, especially when 
you've been using smartphones for a long time that have side mounted volume rocker keys etc but I have really got used to them um, there after a couple of weeks and it can feel quite natural. Sometimes it's a bit of a fiddle to use these for the zoom controls in your on your camera or for changing the volume when you're perhaps watching some video but LG have considered that and you can use um, pinch and zoom on the screen to zoom with the camera and they actually give you a volume button on the video player which is really useful so in actual fact you don't have to use the rear buttons all that much especially when you've got the knock-on feature like that that turns your screen on and off and I've got quite used to using that. Now one of the downfalls with that is the fact that it only appears to work on the home screen so if I go into the apps tray and tap on it nothing nothing works um, and I don't know about you but most people or I certainly do will generally look to turn off my screen whatever app I'm in I don't always go back to the home screen to turn it off but it's a nice feature to have there nonetheless if you haven't or can't get used to the rear mounted buttons whilst we're looking at the back the camera just sits below the raised part of the button here which is quite nice so when on a desktop the lens isn't likely to scratch quite as much uh, and that I think is a little positive and is sometimes overlooked. As you can see here, the black unit uh, is a bit of a fingerprint magnet and I've used both the black and the white. The white doesn't show up the fingerprint so much uh, in comparison to the black, but then it just shows sort of the general dirt and grime of everyday life a little bit more. But you can see that there is a little bit of a texture to the back cover. Uh, although you don't really feel it uh, that much, it's got sort of that uh, stitch carbon fiber sort of look uh, to the black back cover. So the screen is absolutely stunning on this. It really does pop out at you. Um, it's got an IPS display on here at full HD resolution. I think most people will agree it is really, really good. Let's just jump into the gallery to show you a couple of uh, images that I've captured here and try and show off the screen a little bit as well, although I know it's not perfect. So here are some images I took when I was out and about sort of testing the uh, camera on the device. Now, on the whole, I've actually found the camera to be pretty good on the LG G2. Um, what I have found though is the images sometimes actually look better on the screen than they do when you go and put them on your PC and sort of zoom in or blow up. Now it's a mixed bag, I suppose a lot of it depends on the light here, um, but when you sort of went to zoom in on some of them on the PC, they, they distorted quite quickly, but not as bad as some devices. But then again, what you have to consider is most of the photos we take on our camera are used on social network uh, sites, and we don't really blow them up or print them out. So on the whole, you're gonna be quite impressed with the images. And you can actually see, it's picked up quite a lot of detail here, like this uh, mushroom I took uh, an image of. But then there are other times where the detail didn't appear to come out here. So on this one, taking a picture of my dog, um, this was zoomed in just a little bit, but it lacks a little bit of sharpness. Um, that might be a bit hard to tell there through the video camera. It just didn't pick up the detail and, and the focus here wasn't quite so great. But I think you get a bit of hit and miss with um, a lot of um, cameras on devices, but the G2 was generally quite good. I can't really fault it. Um, full HD video recording, front and rear, generally perform quite well. The lack of a dedicated camera key could be an issue for some. You can use the volume controls if you like as the camera shutter button or as the zoom controls is up to you. One nice feature uh, that I do like in the camera is that you can use voice controls. I find that very useful. There's lots of options to control the camera but not so many that you feel sort of uh, overwhelmed. You've got a few different shooting modes uh, to try and help you get the uh, best results possible. Um, not that I can dwell on all of these, but one of the interesting ones on the night uh, shots was, let's just show you this image here. So this is an image of my home office. I had the lights off uh, in the office, but I've just got some strip lighting here that I had switched on. And as you can see, it looks really, really dark. And it obviously was dark uh, in the office and my cupboards are black so they're not going to stand out quite so well but what you have got is pretty good clarity of the rest of the scene uh, so from the monitors and the light it 
it is pretty clear considering how dark it is. Now I took the same picture on the Samsung Galaxy S4 and what I had is a much lighter uh, area so I could make out the cupboards much more clearly, I could make out my office chair, but the clarity of the detail around the lights and the PC screens was worse in my opinion, so it's mixed uh, feedback between the two because in some respects this is the better detail but hasn't sort of lit the whole environment, whereas the uh, S4 got more light on the environment but they lack detail, so it's going to be a bit of a personal opinion as to what uh, is preferable. Uh, for you there. So there's loads of different features on the uh, G2. You can see here we've got Q-Pair. This is quite a cool feature if you've got an LG G-Pad 8.3. You can pair your phone up uh, with it and what you can do is if you're using the tablet you get notifications of your text messages and everything uh, on screen which is really handy. You can even reply to them, social network updates and things like that. You get quite a lot of uh, apps installed out of the box, of course I've got some of my own apps uh, on here. So you get all the standard Google ones like Google+, Plus, uh, Navigation, Maps, etc. But LG do include a few of their own to give a bit of added value and some of them um, are actually quite good. So you get a dictionary here where you can actually uh, use it as like a translation service. You get a file manager out of the box, that's always very useful. You get an FM radio, of course you do need your headphones for that. Uh, you get LG Backup, which is a handy tool for actually backing up the contents of your phone. So many of us don't do that, it's nice to see that there. Uh, not saying it's the best backup solution, but it's a good option uh, for you out of the box. You've got a memo, think of this as your sort of sticky notes. Um, just use it in a digital version, I like that quite a lot. You've got a notebook which as the name implies is a bit more of a glorified uh, option here so you can have different notebooks for different things. Um, what is quite useful I found is if you go into meetings this is quite a good way of digitizing uh, notes so you can have a different notebook for each meeting or for different people you have meetings with. Uh, what they've also included is Quick Remote and as you can see uh, from this it's designed to work with your audio visual equipment and things like that. So I've got my TV and set top box. This was really quick to set up within a minute I had my uh, main TV and skybox set up. I could control it quite happily thanks to an infrared uh, port on the top here. It worked pretty well, um, certainly didn't have any issues connecting. I found this better than the Samsung one, uh, if I'm honest, um, but there's always updates coming to these sort of things, but out of the box to just get up and working very quickly is very nice. Uh, a nice little feature that's probably going to be overlooked by many who are reviewing the device is safety care. Now this isn't for everyone, but if set up this could be of uh, quite useful, certainly for more vulnerable people uh, or users of the device, where you can get um, notifications if your device isn't used for a period of time, so it can call or send messages to contacts if you go out of a certain zone, so this could potentially be for children, so if they go out of a, a mile radius of your house you know that they might be uh, in danger and you can um, select contacts to be notified and you can switch all of these different ones on and off which is quite useful. There's Quick Translator as well, and this can uh, translate uh, text via taking a photo of something, if it's in a foreign language, or, or via voice. So that's quite a useful one, and is a bit like Samsung's S Translate. And um, then we've got VoiceMate, which is kind of like Siri, if you think. It worked quite well, although we did get a few server errors uh, where it couldn't come back. But it was actually a little bit better than we expected. I personally haven't yet sort of transitioned to speaking to my device that much. Um, so I didn't use it extensively, but of the testing I did, um, it seemed to work quite well. You've got a video guide here, which gives you a guide to all of the key features on the uh, G2, which we've covered on our blog. But it sort of explains them and how they work quite well. And then you've got your video player. Now this is um, quite nice, there are a few sort of small tweaks here, um, so let me just show you. This is some sample footage, and you can get an idea of the quality of the screen here. Um, you've got the smart pause that when you look away from the screen uh, it actually pauses, so you can see that's what it's doing now. A bit tricky to do under the camera here, but you can actually uh, open this up in what they call the Q slide guide, and it's a little window here that you can move around 
you can resize it and you can even change the opacity so that you can work in the background uh, with the video still playing which is a really useful and cool little feature. So the downside to this device has to be the uh, internal memory. So whilst there are 16 and 32 gig options available, primarily it's 16 gig, um, now you get about 10 gig available out of the box. Let me just try and actually show you the memory here. So of the 16 gig, 10.62 is available. Uh, I've actually got 7.5 gig av available, which is quite a lot. Now I haven't stored any music on here, I've just got my apps and I don't have an extensive amount of apps here, I've got two gig of apps. But if you download a lot of apps, this could be an issue. Um, I stream my audio, so I don't have the issue with internal memory, but I can imagine a lot of people would, uh, especially if you've got a lot of apps as well. So that's perhaps one of the big downsides uh, to this device is the lack of internal memory and there's no micro SD card slot to expand it but Google and LG and other manufacturers are really trying to push us to the cloud. So it's going to be a bit of a personal opinion here. Why I don't like the fact that LG are particularly pushing the 16 gig model uh, is the fact that one of the standout features is supposedly the ability of the G2 to give you very good audio playback and it does when you uh, put the correct files on here but most streaming services won't stream at that high quality and those sort of high quality audio files take up a lot of space so you're not going to take long to actually fill up the internal memory if you're using those higher quality uh, video files or sorry sound files which really maximize the uh, speakers on this device. So I think that kind of covers the majority of features and functions on this handset. Um, it is a powerhouse with the quad-core processor, NFC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Um, the interface has been tweaked by LG as you can see. It's not going to be to everyone's personal taste, but you can uh, personalize your drop-down menus here and things like that. And I have generally found the G2 to be a pleasure to actually use for the last couple of weeks. And as I say, going back to the S4 won't be tricky, but I certainly will miss the G2 because it has worked so well and been very uh, impressed with it. I think there's few things that you can actually fault with the device. Uh, unlike a lot of the competition, there are always things you can pick up on that are potentially uh, an issue, but the G2 seems to have, have fewer of those issues. So overall, I really do recommend the LG G2, but do bear in mind the constraints from the non-removable battery and the lack of potential internal memory. So until next time, thanks for watching.